you ever get a weird tingle from a whisper? Or feel oddly calm watching a medical exam performed by someone who clearly has never held a stethoscope before? Yeah, same. But here's the wild part. Your brain might think it's being groomed, like someone's gently pressing on your vagus nerve through a pair of headphones. And at the same time, it's flooding you with neurohormones like you just won the evolutionary jackpot. Let's expose what's really happening during ASMR. Because it's not just quirky internet comfort, it's ancient biology. Wrapped in hi-fi whispers. Hi, I'm Dr. Matt, pediatrician, and first time ASMR content creator. Welcome. And yes, this is still a medical channel. So, what is ASMR? Alright, let's be honest. If the YouTube algorithm served you this video, you probably already know. But for the uninitiated who are still missing out, ASMR has lived in that strange, soothing corner of the internet. Somewhere between slime videos and 8 hour rain loops. You click in just to see what it's about. And suddenly, someone's giving you the best Indian head massage of your life. Or fitting you for a suit. And your nervous system goes, Ah, safety. Technically, it stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. But let's be real, no one actually calls it that mid-tingle. What it describes is the soft, pleasant sensation some people get usually starting at the scalp and drifting down the spine when they hear certain sounds or feel like someone's giving them focused, gentle attention. Whispering. Tapping. Brushing. Roleplay medical exams with suspiciously perfect lighting. You know the vibe. But here's the twist. It doesn't just feel good. Studies show ASMR can lower your heart rate shift your brain waves, and even trigger the release of neurochemicals tied to emotional connection and relaxation. Which means those quiet videos might be doing more than helping you sleep. They're actively recalibrating your nervous system. If you're like me, you've thought, what's with the name? ASMR sounds like either a medical device or a government agency but it was actually coined in 2010 by Jennifer Allen, part of an online community trying to describe this weird, euphoric feeling they all shared, but didn't quite know how to explain. She wanted something neutral, clinical, not creepy. So she crafted a name that sounded like it belonged in a neuroscience paper. Autonomous. Because it happens involuntarily. Sensory, because it's all about sound, touch, or visual attention. Meridian, to suggest a wave or peak of sensation, not the acupuncture kind. Response, because it's triggered by something external. It was basically a rebrand, a way of saying this is real. And you don't have to feel weird about it. And it worked. The term stuck. Today, ASMR is a global phenomenon, with millions of creators and viewers using it as a tool for calm, focus, sleep, and as we're now discovering, real neurological change. So next time someone asks what ASMR stands for, just say, it's the clinical way of admitting my brain like soft sounds and feeling cared for. So, we've established that ASMR feels good, but now let's talk about what's really happening under the hood. Because this isn't just about tingles and vibes. Your body is having a measurable, trackable response, and science always brings the receipts. Let's start with a 2018 study by Puero and colleagues. They monitored people watching ASMR videos and found that those who experience ASMR showed a drop in baseline heart rate, on average about 3.14, or pi, beats per minute. 
statistically that significant. Clinically, maybe not that huge, but it's still your nervous system saying, hey, statistically speaking, we're chill. That's comparable to what we see in mindfulness meditation. But here's the twist. At the same time, their skin conductance levels increased, which usually signals alertness or arousal. So, what we're seeing is this rare combo. A physiological calm with cognitive engagement. You're relaxed, but fully present in the moment. What's interesting is that this calming response was only seen in self-identified ASMR experiences. People who don't get the tingles, no change. That tells us this isn't just passive entertainment. It's a distinct, measurable, physiological state for certain brains. More research is needed to understand why this is, whether it's a trained response or something only certain people can experience. Then there's the 2022 study by Engelbrecht's group, which added EEG into the mix. They looked at brainwave activity while participants watch ASMR content. What they found was fascinating. Alpha and theta wave amplitudes decreased, which usually means less drowsiness and more sensory processing. Beta wave amplitude increased, which is linked to focused attention and active thinking. So ASMR isn't just lulling you into a trance. It's creating a state of relaxed focus. Like your brain saying, I'm calm, but I'm paying attention. So, what does all this mean? It means ASMR isn't just a quirky internet trend. It's a multi-system response. Your heart rate slows. Your skin conductance rises. Your brain waves shift into a calm but alert mode and your parasympathetic nervous system takes the wheel. And the best part? These effects aren't just fleeting. Some studies suggest the calming benefits can last up to 45 minutes after the video ends. So it's not just bedtime quackery. It's a nervous system intervention. The brain's bliss cocktail. ASMR and neurochemistry. So, We've seen that ASMR lowers your heart rate and shifts your brain waves. But what about the feel-good part? That deep sense of calm, connection, and even euphoria some people describe. That is your brain reward system kicking in. FMRI studies have shown that during ASMR, there's increased activity in areas like the medial prefrontal cortex, insula, and nuclear succumbens. Regions tied to reward, emotional regulation, and social bonding. These are the same areas that light up when you listen to your favorite song, or genuinely feel cared for. While we don't have direct measurements of neurotransmitter levels during ASMR, researchers believe it involves a likely trio of neurochemicals. 1. Dopamine, the motivation and pleasure molecule. It's what makes you feel good when something rewarding happens. ASMR may gently stimulate the system, giving you that subtle without the crash. 2. Oxytocin, often called the bonding hormone. It's released during moments of trust, intimacy, and social connection. A personal attention triggers like whispering or eye contact may mimic caregiving cues nudging your brain to release oxytocin. And three, endorphins, your body's natural painkillers and mood boosters. The tingling sensation itself may activate these, contrib contributing to that warm, floaty feeling. In other words, ASMR might be giving you a, a low-dose neurochemical hug, no prescription required. And because it's passive, accessible and non-invasive, it's becoming a fascinating tool for emotional regulation and stress relief. Some researchers even compare it to mindfulness or affective touch because it taps into the same systems that help us feel safe, soothed 
and socially connected. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Because ASMR isn't just relaxing, it might be tapping into something ancient. There's a growing theory in the research community that I really like. That ASMR mimics social grooming behavior seen in primates. A group to which humans belong. Think less flea picking, more oxytocin dripping safety rituals. In species like chimpanzees and bonobos, grooming isn't just hygiene. It's emotional regulation. It builds social bonds reduces stress hormones, and activates calming responses in the nervous system. The primate getting groomed shows lower heart rate, higher oxytocin, and a general sense of trust and safety. Now transfer that to your headphones. Someone is whispering, maintaining eye contact, and attending to you with gentle precision. There's rhythm closeness and the illusion of personal care without actually being touched. Researchers call this affective mimicry. So even though no one's combing through your fur, your brain may still interpret the cues as this is safe. This is familiar. I can relax now. ASMR might be the digital descendant of ancient trust rituals, social grooming reimagined for the streaming age. Now, I'll be honest, the first time I watched ASMR, I wasn't thinking about neuroscience. I was thinking, why is this person pretending to clean my ears on camera? But then something happened. I felt calm. Not background noise calm. My nervous system is gently exhaling calm. And over time, especially during pandemic years, I kept hearing the same thing from parents, teens, and even other doctors. ASMR helps me sleep. I watch it when I'm anxious. It's the only thing that settles my racing brain. These weren't isolated experiences. They were patterned, consistent, self-directed coping strategies. So I started digging deeper. And what I found was encouraging. People with generalized anxiety disorder report reduced symptoms after ASMR exposure. Individuals with chronic pain finding relief through ASMR distraction and parasympathetic activation. And young people, especially teens, using it as a non-verbal, non-medicated way to regulate overstimulation. For people who find traditional meditation hard, or for neurodivergent kids who struggle with sensory overload, ASMR offers a gentle path to calm. No breath counting, no closed eyes, no pressure. I'm not saying ASMR replaces therapy or clinical treatment, but I am saying if a tool like this helps someone feel safer in their body, we shouldn't just write it off as fluff. Sometimes, what looks quirky online is just unorthodox self-regulation with a Wi-Fi signal. Now, as much as I love what ASMR is showing us about the brain, I have to be honest. We still don't fully understand why it works the way it does. Not everyone experiences ASMR. Some people get tingles instantly. Others just feel calm. And some feel absolutely nothing. Why does that difference exist? We don't quite know. There's some early research pointing to functional connectivity differences in the brain. Basically, how well different regions talk to each other. But we're still piecing it together. We don't have clear data on long-term effects. Most studies look at short-term, physiological or mood shifts. What happens if someone uses ASMR every day for a year? 10 years? It's an open question. And we haven't even begun to map out the individual variation in triggers. For one person, it's tapping. For another, it's whispered instructions. 
or a fake eye exam with soft lighting. There's no universal formula, which makes ASMR beautifully human and scientifically slippery. But here's what we do know. When it works, it works. And if your nervous system is responding, if your heart rate drops, your jaw unclenches, and your brain says, thank you, then it's worth paying attention to, whether or not we've got every mechanism mapped. So next time someone side-eyes your obsession with sponge sounds or ear exams, just smile. You're not weird. You're regulating. ASMR isn't replacing medicine, but it is medicine adjacent. It's your brain using ancient wiring to respond to digital care cues with calm, chemistry, and connection. If you want to go deeper, I've linked the studies I mentioned below. And if this helps you understand your own nervous system a bit better, like, comment, subscribe, or just send it to that one friend who pretends not to get tingles, but absolutely does.